In this film, we're visiting Laxey Glen Mills, where milling wheat has been ground into flour since 1860. Once the milling wheat has been brought to the mill by the farmer, it's stored in these huge silos, which are such a fantastic feature of the mill. It's then cleaned to remove the chaff and soil and soaked overnight to encourage the grain to loosen so that it's ready to be ground into flour. Sandra Donnelly is the manager at Laxey Glen Mills. This is Laxey Glen Flour Mills and we grind up wheat that the Ironman farmers have grown and they bring it in and we grind it up into various types of flour that are used for bread, pizzas, anything that flour is used for. The whole milling process probably hasn't changed over the past 3,000 years, apart from the only thing that's changed is maybe the energy that's used to actually run the milling process. But the actual uh, process itself, we've gone from stones to actual uh, iron and steel rollers, but that's the only change that's happened. It's a very basic process. The wheat is broken open, which releases the largest amount of flour. The brown outer skins is taken off, and then the white inside of the wheat grain is gradually ground down with special rollers until it's small enough and fine enough to pass through a very, very fine piece of nylon. When you take off the outer brown husks, that is removed and used for animal feed. That is very high in protein, very high in fibre, and that is, goes to animal feed. The white is then made to make white flour, but when we're making brown flour, we add the brown outer husk back in to make brown flour. And that is what you call wholemeal flour, because it's from the whole grain. To go from one grain of wheat to flour takes probably about 20 minutes. Once we've actually got the flour from the wheat, it either goes into a bulk tanker that you can see behind me for Ramsey Bakery, and that is white flour, or it's bagged into a brown sacks of 32 kilograms or 16 kilograms for the bakers, or even into small packs of flours that you see on the supermarket shelves. The whole milling process is very, very automated now. Uh, where in 40 years ago there would have been about 45 staff working at Laxey Glen Mills, there are now only seven members of staff here that bag the flour, uh, bag the animal feed, take the wheat in when the farmers bring it in. It's all very automated. Laxey Glen Mills produces all the flour for Ramsey Bakery. They buy about 1,800 tonnes of flour a year at Ramsey Bakery. They are by far our biggest customer. So let's go to Ramsey Bakery. Jim Duncan is the owner and he started his business from scratch in 1972. He met us at four o'clock one morning to show us around and to tell me how a white sliced loaf gets made. White bread, obviously white flour, water, yeast, salt, fat, fat to help the shelf life, to keep the keeping qualities. And also there are some other ingredients which we call emulsifiers, which enable us to mix the fat with the water. Bearing in mind, the amount of fat in bread is only two or three percent unlike pastry which has got 50%. To get that amount of fat to properly mix, you need a thing called an emulsifier. So that's what they're there for. The dry ingredients are put into a huge mechanical mixer. Water is added and in a few minutes the bread dough is ready. It's then emptied into a truck that lifts the dough up to the top of another machine called a divider. When Jim Duncan started in business over 30 years ago, he was supplying just 24 sliced loaves a day for two shops in Ramsey. As his business grew, he needed bigger premises. Eventually, this specially designed bakery was built on the site of the old railway station in Ramsey. Now Ramsey Bakery uses around 1,500 tonnes of flour and produces 3 million loaves of bread each year. The bread is distributed to almost every food store on the Isle of Man. The divider cuts the dough into smaller pieces. Each small piece is shaped on this machine, which looks like a helter-skelter. The dough is then weighed, and if it's underweight, it falls into a clean bin and is returned to the divider. 
It is made into a round ball, and that's there was a reason for that because it's a nice shape to handle. It means that it won't stick to things. From a round ball, it then gets rested, which we call an intermediate proof. It relaxes the dough, and then it's conveyed to a machine which is called the molder, which shapes it into the sausage shape of a loaf, ready for going into the bread tin. And that's the stage. And then on, when they're in the bread tins, we put a lid on, which makes the square shape of a loaf, and now we're ready for final proving. The prover is the place where it rises. It's in there for about an hour and six minutes. This is a warm cupboard with humidity, steam in it. It rises to within one inch of the top of the lid. Now we're going into the travelling oven. The travelling oven will take the bread in automatically and there we will bake for 26 minutes. After 26 minutes, the bread automatically comes out. Then we go down to what we call a suction de panna, where we blast each of the tins with air, which makes the loaves pop up like soldiers, almost like a, a, a pop-up toaster. They settle back in the tins and then a suction uh, de panna sucks the bread out of the tin. The tins go on one track, the bread goes on another track. We've now divided the tins from the actual loaves. The tins are returned back to the original machines called the, the molder where they're refilled. And the loaves go into what is called a cooler. And we're in the cooler for approximately two hours, certainly not less than two hours, till we reach a temperature which is the same as ambient, whatever the ambient temperature is. And at that point they're ready for slicing. They come out automatically in batches, 18 on a batch. They go down to either a medium thick slice or a toast thick slice. At that point, having passed through the slices, they are automatically bagged by very clever machines, put the, put the necktie on, check the weight to make sure it's now over 800 grams, finally through the metal detectors and then they're ready for putting into the baskets and taking to dispatch ready for delivery. Now the loaves are ready for you the consumer to buy. This whole process happens night after night to ensure that you can always get fresh Manx bread wherever you are on the Isle of Man.